Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Over Under. I'm your host, Ahmed Smith, joined as always by my co host, Tahsin. Nope. Yep. It ain't him. It is. AJ. Yep. My good friend, AJ. It's an invasion angle we're doing here <laughs> from Clackett. <laughs> And this is our show over under where we discuss movies, TV shows, and video games, and we decide if we think they're overrated or underrated. Now, today we have something we like to call Does It Hold Up? I hope it does. (laughs) Which is when we take a look at an older movie and we decide if we think it holds up or not. All right. And for today's episode, we have the movie Inception. Inception starring Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. This movie came out in 2010. Yep. And it's received a rating of 87%. 87%. Now, would you like to explain to our first time viewers what the buzzers are for? My favorite part of the show, and I get to explain it. Uh, I've been waiting so long. I know, I know. To be in front of the camera to explain this. You already know because you've been watching this show. So... (laughs) <laughs> do you agree or disagree okay so for our first time viewers that don't know uh we have these two buzzers in front of us we look up the rating and we decide if we agree or disagree green means we agree red means we disagree now the movie inception 87 percent. does it hold up do you agree or disagree in three two one well, you don't know where this is going. I don't know where it's going. Right? I don't. So I'm going to let you start, uh, start off. Let's see. You're going to let me start off? Yeah. I think the movie's very overrated. Okay. Um, don't get me wrong. I like the movie. I just, I don't love it. It. What don't you love about Inception? I, 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 I'll let you know right now. I'll, yeah. tell you, I'll tell you right now. Okay. All right. Um, Inception. 80% of the movie... Two hours and 30 minutes. 80% of the movie is characters explaining the movie to other characters. Fair. And I feel like if you need to take that route, the movie doesn't really need to exist. You could have spent a little less time explaining, and there were so many unnecessary plots that were going on throughout the movie that it just didn't make any sense. First of all, there's... They can conjure anything in these dreams, right? They're conjuring weapons, they're conjuring whatever, and they're trying not to die in the dream. Why don't they conjure bulletproof vests? <laughs> See, you can find these plot holes in pretty much a lot of movies it's that have this these gimmicks in them. That, right? But that's exactly what it is. The movie is a gimmick. Well, that's what you talked about. That's what you said about the thing I brought with me today, which is a totem, <laughs> which is a great totem that spins for a really long time. Right. <laughs> um, what else? Another part of the movie mm-hmm. where uh, his wife frames him for his death. Yes. For her death. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yes. She was in another building. Mm-hmm. There's no security camera footage to show that they were in two different buildings. You're... T- you Okay, I see how you're watching this movie very realistically, which you should always suspend your disbelief, especially if you're. A yeah, but the suspension of disbelief only has, like, can only go so far. It has right. its limits. Okay. Right. So now, where do you think this rates then? What's an accurate rating for? Inception? See, and that's what I'm saying. I like the movie. I just didn't love it. Uh-huh. I would rate it probably. What did I say? It was eighty-seven. Seventy-eight. Okay, that's still like a C It's a plus, solid movie. You know? It's a solid movie. It, it is a solid yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, what did you like about the movie? Because I feel like you're going to tell me it's underrated. Uh, it's not underrated. One of the best Christopher Nolan movies ever made. Nope. It's, it's the movie that made him recognizable to me. Okay. You know, uh, made him my favorite filmmaker because of this one movie. Mm. And I just love the premise. The performances, um, DiCaprio and Jos- Joseph Gordon-Levitt, especially, right? Um, the s- the characters, the development, the just the concept of planting the seeds of an idea, 
mm. into someone's mind by this dream thing they do. And I bet you what, in the next decade, there is some sort of sequel that is built around this world because the possibilities are endless. Not going to happen. <laughs> it's, I just don't think, even if they did a sequel, it wouldn't be Christopher Nolan. That's the only way they would do it, though. He would have to do it. Mm. It's, Nolan wouldn't just be like, here's my property, do something with it. Yeah, but I don't he think do he that. would want to redo oh, it. Oh, that's, you know that's, I mean? that's another thing. Yeah. Yes. But we'll get into the ending and what it means. I just feel like Christopher Nolan always tries to overcomplicate things. And that's the reason I didn't watch the movie Tenet. I watched Tenet, and I need to watch it again just because of how complicated that movie was. Mm. But um, he always loves playing with time. Right. And time is a concept. Yeah. So it's always an element in his recent movies, at least. Mm. Okay, but you still didn't tell me exactly what you loved about this movie or where you'd rate it. Or I would rate it, um, it's 87 on the uh, 87%. I would say it's worthy of more of a 93, which is not too much of playing around with the rating. But it's in the 90s for me. But what does that for you? What gives it that extra Um, 5% or 6%? The rewatchability for this film is amazing. That's what I was going to say. There's no rewatchability to the movie. For me, there is. I watched it twice, and that was too much. Nope. I've watched it multiple times, and it's been a decade now that it's been out. 12 years, yeah. Right? I watched it so many times, and each time I watch it, not saying I'm discovering something new, Mm. but I am understanding another element to this whole process. Okay. You know? See, I tried to rewatch it last night before we shot this. Okay. Best nap of my life. (laughs) It was it was such a good nap. That's a lot of disrespect <laughs> to Christopher <laughs> Nolan, and I will not take such thing. It's not even the disrespect. It's more disrespectful to, to Leonardo DiCaprio because he's better than that. Shh, come on. He's better wow. than that. Okay. Leonardo DiCaprio is the greatest actor of all time, and arguably, yeah. yeah. He did not really get to do his thing in this movie. I don't. Think I don't so, know. I enjoyed his performance. I I believed him. Mm. Um. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't have pictured someone else in that role, honestly. Okay. Tell me this. Mm. Because I really don't like open-ended movies. Just tell me what happened. That's how I feel about movies, right? Let me, right. Let, hey, let me get okay. into it. Yes. Without... Um, I don't know why I would say without getting into spoilers because it's 12 years old. But what do you, we'll get into what it. Do you think, alert, what we're going to get into What it. do you think happened? Was it a dream... Was he still in the dream? Was the whole movie just a dream? Was it all a part of his imagination? Are they going to find a way to connect it to Shutter Island and he's still in the (laughs) mental hospital? That's a good one. But um, I'll give you Christopher Nolan's response. How about that? Okay, fair. Can I grab that totem? So, just the thing. I don't need to... Speaking of gimmicks. Yes. (laughs) So basically, in this dream world, you need to um, think of something unique to yourself that no right. other designer can replicate. So the main character's totem was basically, uh, what do you call it, the spin top? Yeah. Top? Yeah. So this tabletop thing, um, it spins at the end of the movie as he's going towards his, fa- his kids. Right. And that's the whole point of everything he did. He's trying to get back to the States without getting arrested mm. to see his children. So... The end of the movie, you see the spinning, sorry, spinning endlessly. Yeah. And the credits roll, signifying that it's not stopping, which means it could be in a dream. But it was wobbly. It was wobbly. Christopher Nolan's response, I love this response. If that's your focus, then you miss the whole point. Okay. Let me tell you the actual answer. Yes, tell me the actual answer. Because you Christopher like Nolan... <laughs> Actually told Michael Caine, yes. which, by the way, highlighted the movie. I love Michael Caine. He's a great actor. Great actor. That every single scene you are in is in the real world. Okay. And Michael Caine was in that last scene. So that makes it? Yeah, but I didn't, have didn't want to have to go and do my research to find that out. <laughs> but also this answer is true. If your focus is on this, 
you miss the point of uh, DiCaprio's character not waiting to see whether he's in a reality or in the dream world. He just saw his children. He had enough. He gunned it towards the door. Mm. I think Christopher Nolan is just trying to sound deeper than he is. The movie insists <laughs> upon itself, and we both have agreed that the movie is overrated. And that's uh, not, that's <laughs> mm, take but, that uh, handshake back. You know, edit it out of the show. But uh, <laughs> we're just going to take a quick break and then come back with a segment we like to call "Outside Opinions." Stay tuned. And we're back with a segment we like to call Outside Opinions. This is where we take a look at people's opinions at home on the movie Inception. And the first m opinion that we have is from Derexis Hamad, who was a guest on our show. Epic, epic, epic. Three epics. Three epics. That was it? That, that's the whole response. Just epic, epic, See, epic. People agree with but it, no, the voice it, of the voiceless. It, like you know? <laughs> epic. One epic would be enough. You know what Three I mean? Epics. Three is too much. The movie was not that good. Like, I feel like there are certain movies where just because everyone else thinks it's good, people think it's good. Like a Drake song. Oh, that's okay. <clears throat> that's just a personal thing you all have, right. I think. I actually like Drake. Oh. Um, all right. So the next comment we have is from Shahed. Taqi, okay. who says, masterpiece. More and more people just agreeing you with see, whatever uh, I'm saying. Uh, you know? Hassan <laughs> picked out these responses, and Come Hassan on. always tries to prove me wrong, Come right? Come on. All right. It's always conspiracy. It's <laughs> always a conspiracy. The next comment is from another regular viewer, S. Stellar. Mind-blowing visuals, outstanding cast, remarkable soundtrack, Crazy open ending. We did not even talk about Hans Zimmer in this movie. The Dude. soundtrack was amazing. Yes. The soundtrack was great. Especially I'll give you that. time, if you've heard the time. Mm. That's, that's just. <sighs> I'm trying to find no a response. No one's going to agree with you. It's Inception, dude. All right. So we're just going to take the last response, yes. which is EXT underscore Inferno. You know it's a good movie when you get to the end of it and you haven't understood anything. Oh, well, how is that? How have you not understood anything? <laughs> Just it was an open ending. That doesn't mean you don't understand the whole movie. That doesn't make but, any but sense. You know, the other part is why is that your criteria of a good movie not understanding it by the end of it? I think I would be very see. That's what upset. I mean by people <laughs> just try to. Uh, bandwagon. bandwagon. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. <sighs> we'll take one last response just because I know it's good for your ego. Uh, yes, yes. Pluto Q8 says perfection, period. Perfection. So period. nobody didn't, there's no one that didn't like this movie. Because such people rarely exist on this planet we share. Well, that's why I'm Life one of a kind. One. <laughs> but well, uh, I'll give him that. That was great. <laughs> great. Yes. All right, well, that's all we have for Outside Opinions. We're going to take a quick break and then come back with a segment called I Out. Stay tuned. And we're back. This is Over Under. Your name is not what I'm thinking, right? It's Ahmed. My name is Ahmed, yes. True. That's a, that's a very astute observation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, we're going to do this segment called Eye Out, where we check out what's coming in theaters this coming weekend, I guess, right? Yeah, not this coming weekend, just the in, the future, weeks, in the future. Um, movies that are coming out, uh, things going on in the industry, in Hollywood, uh, certain things of that nature. Cool. So, what do we have? Um... First of all, what we have is James Gunn taking over DC, DC. DCU. Right. The DCEU changed the name to DCU, which makes no sense. So right? it matches up with the MCU? MCU, right? But, DCU but MCU is Marvel Cinematic Universe. Universe. DCU is... Detective Comics Comics, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, universe. Yeah. <laughs> So James Gunn's taken full creative control of it, yeah. and he's going to be handling all the projects that come out. They're so trying he's to the Kevin Feige exactly. They're trying the to DC. turn him into the Kevin Feige. And James Gunn directed the 
Guardians. He directed for Marvel. He directed the Guardians. Uh, he directed the Suicide Squad for uh, DC. That's DC. And he did Peacemaker for DC, the TV show. Okay, so he's more on the DC side. After thinking about it, I mean, kind Peacemaker of Peacemaker is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so is the Guardians of the Galaxy. The problem is that I don't think you get a creative like a director to hold down the fort for an entire studio. Like Kevin Feige is a producer. Right. You know what I mean? They need a an produc- equivalent of that. Right. And so they teamed him up with this other producer. I can't remember his name right now. The name escapes me, but uh, apparently they have a history together, and the two of them combined are supposed to be the Kevin Feige of the DC Universe. I mean, I would love for them to try and, you know, make it happen, mm-hmm. you know? But they just started off wrong because they just wanted to rush everything and catch up with Marvel. They should have just gone at their own pace mm. and they would have delivered masterpieces. Right. But they just rushed it. Yep, I, I agree. They might save it. Um, you hated Black Adam. I think it's the beginning of something beautiful. Yeah, and it's I, I do like that it's set up Man of Steel too because apparently yeah. that's coming out too. Yep. But uh, the next bit of news we have yeah. is... Scream Six is we're coming out in January. Oh God! No, we're never gonna be done. <sighs> Scream is the greatest. I guess greatest anyone can put on a mask and continue. Right, and right. and to me, it's the greatest horror movie franchise ever because it revitalized the slasher genre. Do you know why I love Scream? Why? Because it gave birth to something I love called scary movie. Terrible! That is terrible. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. It's a funny <sighs> series of parodies, you know? Um, the last bit of news I wanted to talk about yeah. is that there's a Barbie movie coming out. A what now? A Barbie movie. A Barbie movie. Yeah. Okay. And the reason a live I, action. A live action Barbie movie, right? And I think who's in <laughs> it? It's, it's Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie. <laughs> That's the reason I bring it up because obviously I'm not a fan of Barbie. But I'm a fan of Margot Robbie, of right? Course you are. And I watch anything that she's in. Mm. So I'm gonna be checking that movie out. When is it coming out exactly? I think early next year. Okay. Yeah. Barbie. And and we're gonna sit right here and do a review on that together. I hope I'm not involved <laughs> in that episode. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is all we have for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed this uh, little change while Sam is on break. Yep. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care and drive safe.